celebrated Teacher's Day two days ago. We want to wish all the teachers a happy Teacher's Day. We have been blessed by your love, care and dedication. Thank you, teachers. Hi, kids. I hope you enjoyed last week's activities. Thank you for sharing your artwork and photos too. They were colourful and inspiring. Keep them coming. We love them all. In the last episode, we shared with you about the second beatitude. Do you still remember what it is? That's right. It's blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. We learned that when we are sad, Jesus can comfort us through a word of encouragement, a friend, a song, and even through nature. This week, we will share with you another beatitude. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Before we find out what this means, let's begin with a prayer and a song to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus, who shows us how to live, the Beatitudes. Holy Spirit, Teach us to know the Father more, so that we can love and serve Him. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Are you all ready to sing this song to Jesus? Let's get on your feet to worship Him. Called Savior, have you heard of his perfect love? Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Because I have found this love, I believe in the Son. Show me your I believe he's the risen one I believe that I'll live forever I believe that my king will come Cause I have found his love I believe in the sun Show me your And welcome back! In this next part, we will be learning about how the Beatitudes can guide us in our daily life. Here's a story on how we can overcome challenges. Hey John, how was soccer? Must have been good, right? Not exactly, but everything's okay now. Oh, what happened? You see, it was some of the boys. They were making fun of me for not scoring a goal. And they were even laughing. 
Oh man, they must have hurt. So what did you do? John must have had a tough time. I wonder what he felt. I wonder what he did. What would you do if you were John? Throw the ball at the boys? Tell the boys that it was not a nice thing to do and walk away? Walk away and do nothing at all. Now let's see what John did. I was feeling so angry. I was so tempted to throw the ball at the other boys. But you didn't do that, right? I didn't because the Holy Spirit reminded me of what Mom shared with me just yesterday. You know, John, sometimes you may find yourself in a difficult situation where people call you names or put you down. You may be tempted to shout at them or even fight back. But in the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. To be meek is not to be weak. To be meek is to have strength under control. Others may be mean to you, but when you stay gentle and calm, you show them that you have great strength. It is when we are meek that we show others that we are children of God and that Jesus is our strength. What do you do then? It was not easy, but I calmed myself down and told the boys that it wasn't nice of them to pick on me. I did my best. I tried to practice meekness. Wow, I'm so proud of you. You really managed to live out the beatitude. I couldn't have done it without our great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than the skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wide. Kids, if you find yourself in a similar situation as John, where others are mean to you, remember to be meek and to have strength in the Lord. Ask St. Joseph to pray for you too. In this way, 
you will show others what it means to be a child of God. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. People there knew him as the carpenter's son. Who is this humble carpenter? That's right, he's Saint Joseph. Life for his family was not easy. He worked hard to take good care of Mary and Jesus. Joseph meekly did what God asked of him, even when it was hard. Soon after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Get up, take Jesus and Mary and flee to Egypt. Herod was looking for Jesus to destroy him. Trusting God, Joseph obeyed right away. For over 10 days, he led his family through the hot and dry desert. God gave Joseph strength to endure the tiring and dangerous journey and to protect Jesus and Mary. When Herod died, an angel appeared in a dream to Joseph. The angel said, Get up, take Jesus and Mary and go to Israel. Those who are seeking Jesus' life are dead. Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary and went to Israel. They settled down safely in Nazareth. St. Joseph is known as the guardian of the Redeemer because he watched over Jesus lovingly and was a good earthly father to him. For this week's activities, don't forget to access the Padlet link and share your work with us. We can't wait to see them. Now remember to share with us one thing you've learned today too. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella had to share with us about something that we will pray during the Mass later. We sing a great hymn of praise at the start of Mass after we have purified our hearts by telling God that we are sorry for our sins. Did you know that the church has been singing it for over 1,600 years? The first line, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will, are the words of the angels to the shepherds of Bethlehem, telling them that baby Jesus had been born into the world. We sing the angels' words at Mass because at the consecration, Jesus will come to be with us once again. Later. We sing that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. These are the words of his cousin, St. John the Baptist, who told his disciples to follow Jesus. So together with the angels and saints, we give glory to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and prepare ourselves for the celebration of Holy Mass. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the Gloria. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about the Beatitudes. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, 6 September 2020. We offer up this Mass for all children that they may love and be responsible for their brothers and sisters, just as Christ made Himself responsible for us. Join us in singing the processional hymn Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, dear children, to this celebration. I think we are all happy to be here. And I would just uh, tell you some personal experience about the Mass, because sometimes we may think that the Mass is a little like long and, and a bit boring. And then I would, especially this online mass, no? because we are not in the church. And I, I wanted to say to you that there was a moment when I was also young like you, that I discovered that the mass was very meaningful. Why, what was the trick? I realized that the mass was not just attending mass, but meeting with my best friend. And that was Jesus. I discovered that during the Mass, I could talk to him. That was the trick. If I was able to talk to him, had something to say to him at some moments, I discovered it was much better. So I would invite you to try to do the same during this Mass. And I would suggest three moments, because sometimes we get a little distracted, three moments to remember. One, after the homily, I will give a homily very short, don't worry. After the homily, to try to say, I will get one idea, one. And this idea maybe is God telling me something. I will try to say, okay, what is the idea? Try to remember and maybe tell Jesus, Jesus, please help me to live this better. Huh? See if you remember. If you forget, don't worry. I will try to remind you. <laughs> Second moment, when they ring the bell, the priest shows Jesus in the bread. That is the moment he comes. We all kneel, and then it's a good moment to say something to him. Maybe Jesus, I believe you, you are there. Welcome, or thank you for coming, something like that. Whatever you want to say. Third moment, during communion. Of course, most of you are at home. You will not actually receive communion in your mouth, but still you can say, hey Jesus, I would like to receive you. Huh? and try to say something to him as if you receive. Of course, we have the spiritual communion. They will put it there for you to say, but say something from your heart. And I tell you, Jesus hears you. Eh? That is the incredible thing. Eh? So I suggest this to you, see how it goes. Eh? And then now we continue with the mass. Eh? My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved son and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of men, I have appointed you a sentry to the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, warn them in my name. If I say to a wicked man, wicked wretch, you are to die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked man to renounce his ways. Then he shall die for his sin, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, however, you do want a wicked man to renounce his ways and repent, and he does not repent, then he shall die for his sin, but you yourself would have saved your life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Avoid getting into debt. Accept the debt of mutual love. If you love your fellow man, you have carried out your obligations. All the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not covet, and so on, are summed up in this single command. You must love your neighbor 
as yourself. Love is the one thing that cannot hurt your neighbor. That is why it is the answer to every one of the commandments. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother does something wrong, go and have it out with him alone, between you two, you two selves. If he listens to you, you have won back your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. The evidence of two or three witnesses is required to sustain any charge. But if he refuses to listen to this, report it to the community. And if he refuses to listen to the community, treat him like a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you solemnly, whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. I tell you solemnly once again, if two of you on earth agree to ask anything at all, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three meet in my name, I shall be there with them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, Jesus tells us that if our brother does something wrong, we should tell him, the two of us, alone. Huh? So here is Jesus telling us that we have to give correction and that we also have to receive correction. Now I would, I would ask myself, who likes to be corrected? Not I, and among you, who among you likes that someone comes and corrects you? Hey, this thing you did wrong. Then we all get very angry. Hey, this is our experience. But here is God telling us, it's good that someone tells you when you do something wrong, because then you can improve and you will be happier. If not, you will get into trouble. And I share with you a little experience I have Probably you notice that I am not a native English speaker. Have you noticed I have a funny accent? Huh? Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> this is because I'm from Spain. Then I have a friend who is from England. And then first time, he's a very close friend. His name is Neil. And then first time we met, I told him, hi, Neil. And then he told me, excuse me? My name is Neil. You call me Nail. Nail is something you hammer into the wall and then you hang things there. I say, oh, excuse me, Nail. No, Neil. <laughs> and then after that, each time I meet him, he corrects me. He always finds some word I say wrong. And then at the beginning, I felt so irritated. Say, How come every time we meet, he tells me something wrong, I said. But then after a while, I realized that I was improving my English a little, thanks to him. Huh? So I have improved thanks to his correction. And now, actually, we laugh. Every time he tells me, hey, <laughs> that one is wrong, I laugh. I say, OK, you caught me. Huh? 
and he does it very nicely. So I am thankful to him, and I'm sure God sent me this friend so that I improve a little. English is not so important, but what about our behavior? If we have a bad character, we make everybody unhappy. If a friend or our parents or someone who loves us tells us, then we improve. So that is why God tells us, receive the correction well. Huh? We don't like it, but we have to remember this. God is sending us someone to help us. Eh? So I will ask you, my dear friends, eh, whether you are very young or not so young, how do I take corrections, especially when they come from our dear ones, either my parents, my teacher, or my friend? Oh, I get very angry. Try not to get angry. Eh? is for our good. Huh? And then also God tells us that we also have to correct. All of us correct someone. Don't tell me that you don't correct anybody because we also scold a little some people. Don't you? Hey, your friend, hey, this is wrong. <laughs> and then God tells us to do it nicely. To do it nicely. Not when you are angry. Argh! No. To do it nicely. You say, say it to him when you are alone, not in front of other people. When, you see, when they tell us nicely, it's easier to accept. And then we improve. So this is valid for you, eh, children, my friends, but also for the parents. We all quarrel a little bit and we get irritated. Not then when you are angry. When you are calm, go and tell your friend to help him. To help him. Mm -hmm. So I just share with you this. God wants us to help one another. Huh? How to do it? First, to receive corrections well. If you get a little angry, try to accept. Huh? Try to, maybe God wants me to accept it. Accept it. You will be better. Be thankful. Thank you. Maybe at the beginning we are angry. Wait a little and later on you tell your friend or your parents, thank you for telling me. See if you can do it. God will help you to do it. Accept the correction is for our good. Second thing, we also have to help others. Do it nicely. Correct, trying to help. And then our Lord will be so happy, first with the one corrected and with you because you help. So I stop here, my homily, I said very, very short. <laughs> Try to think. God, oh, oh God, oh Lord Jesus, my friend, what are you trying to tell me today? One idea. Try to think, eh? little, a little in silence. Maybe to receive my correction better. Maybe to help my friends. Not angry, but trying to help them. Eh? So let us think a little bit in silence. Thank God for the corrections, the good ones that we have received. And maybe think if we are trying to help our friends or the, our siblings, trying to correct them nicely with love, trying to help. Huh? Now we say the creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, Jesus has said that he is always with us when we gather to pray. So, together let us pray. Our response is, Lord, graciously hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop William, all priests and clergy that entrusted with a prophetic role, they may bravely speak out against evil, sin and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For reconciliation amongst nations, societies and families, that God will guide world leaders, those in authority and positions of influence, to speak the truth to one another, that they do so discreetly and respectfully as Jesus had thought, always with the good of the other as the goal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the public safety and well-being of all health care and relief workers in the front line of the pandemic, hurricanes, floods and wildfires, that God will protect them from harm, give them the strength to carry out their duties and help them support and give hope to those in crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our greater care of the earth, that God will guide us to respect and be responsible stewards of the creation that God has entrusted to our care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For our personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. God of mercy and love, may our ears and hearts be open to receive your word, and may our mouths proclaim your faith, that we might be signs of your blessings to all whom we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of, of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, 
spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, have mercy on us. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, dear friends, is the moment of receiving our Lord in communion. Most of you are at home. Remember to say a spiritual communion. This is a good moment to talk to our Lord Jesus. There will be a spiritual communion that you can, you have maybe learned already, but say something to him in your hearts. Eh? Like, Lord Jesus, you are my friend. Thank you for coming. Although I cannot receive you now, in the church, but still come to me, still be with me. Huh? So each one of you can say something to Jesus, our best friend. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for his infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, 
may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And then before we finish, let us remember our mother Mary, who is always with us. Although we haven't seen her during this celebration, she was always with her son Jesus and also with us. So let us remember to pray also to our mother Mary, entrusting her with our needs, praying for our friends, our families. She is the mother that Jesus gave to us. Let us remember her now before we finish. And now I will give you the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. parents, children, students, and Catholic educators. We celebrate Catholic Education Sunday next week, 13 September 2020. This will be a special online Mass for and by students and Catholic educators. Let us come together as one in love, as Christ loves, to celebrate this milestone of Catholic education in Singapore. This Mass will be celebrated by Father Adrian Danker. See you there! Sisters and brothers in Christ, remember Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I invite you to take the word bread and let it give you life. So be, begin the day with your beloved. As you wake up, after you've done your routine, maybe just before breakfast or maybe just after breakfast, sit down, say a short prayer. And then we have R. Routinely read the Word of God. Pick up the Bible, read for five minutes. Sometimes we say, I read the Bible, I'm very difficult. Okay, start with the simple ones. What are the simple ones? The Gospels, the stories about Jesus. 
I'm sure as you read the stories of Jesus, the things that he had done and the things that he had said are not so difficult. What's the next word? E. Every day, even as you pray, affirm someone. Start with the ones that are closest to you. Now tell me something. Are you really saying there's nothing good in the one that you call beloved? And you know, after three days, you think to yourself, I can't think of anything else, you know. Huh? Nothing else to think about. Never mind. Repeat the same things. At least they know. You know that your spouse knows that you always think that she is thoughtful. A is attend to the Eucharist. Attentively. You know, sometimes on Sunday, because it is recorded, you say, I will watch it later. Sisters and brothers, you're not going to get anything if you watch. Because the Eucharist, while it's there, it's empty of you. You are not there. Try and make it the first thing in the morning. And then while you're watching, you know, don't press the pause button and then on your computer, yeah, I forgot to do this homework. Oh, I forgot to do this, send this email. No. Attentively participate. And D, donate generously. Now, why do you need to donate generously? Because donation is moving that prayer into action. So we donate to the needs of the church. And when we begin to do this, what happens is your heart begins to grow. When your heart begins to grow, even though we are in this difficult situation where you can't attend the Eucharist physically, daily, as we would like to, as our heart grows, we will be able to face the situation as it is. Not only that, grow during these times. So form these five good habits. And I do wish that you will always have this bread with you. So that when you receive the bread, of Jesus Christ, the union of communion will be so great because you will be bringing something to the Lord as the Lord brings His graces, His presence to you. Have a good day.